Hello and welcome to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and today I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to back up and restore a Zarafa email server. Today I'm using Zentral 2.2 64-bit edition. Zentral does offer cloud backup services. That is always an option. In today's tutorial I will be using a script I put together in order to run the backups. First a little bit of background on my setup here. I'm using VirtualBox and in, within VirtualBox I set up a second hard drive to represent where the backups will be stored. Um, all the naming schemas that I use in this tutorial can be changed. Uh, so I call this hard drive Storage 1 and Storage 1 is actually going to be mounted, mounted as a term they use in Linux, to connect um, to a folder and the folder is on the root called Storage 1. The reason I do this, the scripts are going to be pointed to Storage 1, and I need Storage 1 to be able to pass this information to the other hard drive. Here's a little script that I like to use. This can be run in command line too. I like to run the script it's every time I reboot the server. That way it will connect the hard drive to that folder. It runs the mount command, and this is the name of the other hard drive and this is the folder it's looking to connect to. Now, if you do not know the name of the hard drive you put into your server, you can always use gparted. I did cover gparted in another tutorial. It's a great hard drive utility, giving you all kind of good information about your hard drive. And there it is. Now, best practice, I feel, is to do your backups to another hard drive. Um, I don't feel it's good practice to do your backups to the same hard drive as your operating system. Just be, just in case you experience some type of a catastrophic failure, you want to make sure that your information and your backups are safe on another hard drive. And that way, when the hard drive fills up, you can remove the hard drive and put it into a safe place and then replace the hard drive and continue your backups. So, now let's get to that script. That script is on the root I called the folder scripts and here is the script it's called Zarafra SH. And let's take a quick look at it. I'll open it with LeafPad, another excellent text editor. And let's go through the script real quick here. It starts out running a bin bash typical shell command. And then it proceeds to stop the post fix which is also the known as the email server or SMTP or MTA mail transfer agent. And then it will stop the Zarafa server. Then it will change directory to the root. And then it will make a directory called bk1. You can call it wherever you want. bk1 is backup1, just kept it very simple. It will then change directory into backup1. Once it's in backup1, it will then run a command called mysql dump. It will reach out to the local host where the mysql server is uh, running. And it will use the credentials. This is a username test and password to password1. You'll have to change that and put in your credentials uh, to make this run. And then it'll look for a database called Zarafa. It will take the information out of this database and dump it into a file. And I call the file Zarafa underscore SQL. This is the file it'll create. You can give it whatever name you want. And then it'll place a date stamp on this file and then it will compress it. The next it will copy using a recursive command Recursive means it's going to copy the subdirectories along with it, along with the parent, and it's going to go to var liv Zarafa. Take a quick look at that. The very important directory. And that is right here. And once it copies that information, it's going to move to storage one, the other hard drive, into the folder called Zarafa, and then it's going to give it a name, Zarafa file. You can give it whatever you want, and it will append that file with a date stamp. Date stamps are very important. It makes the folder have a unique identifier. That way you can do multiple backups, or many backups, in the same directory and not have to worry about uh, files being overwritten because they have a unique identifier, the date. And it also makes it a lot easier to find a particular uh, backup when it has a date stamp on it. The next step, it will move BK1, which is the SQL file, to the hard drive storage one, Zarafa, and it'll call it Zarafa SQL with a date stamp. Once again, this name can be changed. 
then it will proceed to restart the Postfix and Zarafa services. Now that's a lot to take in. Remember you can pause the video at any time and uh, go back and just review. The pause button is your best friend when it comes to doing these tutorial videos. Let me close out of this and just take a look at a backup I ran recently. It's under storage one, which is you know, the other hard drive. And there's the Zarafa folder I kept referring to in the script. And I did this backup on 8-31-2012. That is the SQL and the Zarafa file. Okay, next we need to run a backup. Now you could actually run the backup from the actual script itself by double clicking it. But I would rather run an unattended backup. So that way um, you can run it after hours. Uh, the best way to do that, I feel, is to run what's called a cron job. A cron job is a scheduled job. And I'm going to set that up through Webmin. Now, if you're not familiar with Webmin, I did do a tutorial on how to set that up in Zential. Uh, it has an excellent administrative interface. It has uh, gives you control over a lot of the different services on your server. It's a great complement to the Zential administrative interface. Between the two, you can really do a lot to manage your server. It gives you a lot of control over your environment. So let's go into Webmin. And that is right here. And log in. And we're going to move over to a System. Scheduled cron jobs. Scroll down to the bottom where it says create a new scheduled cron job. We're going to pick a user. I'm going to pick root. It's going to want the command. The command is basically where is the script located and it wants to run. I have it right here. Member scripts. And then the name of the script right after it. I'm just going to paste it in the description and whatnot. Now, you can have it run this script hourly. You know, that would probably eat up a lot of hard drive space very quickly. Or you could schedule it daily at midnight. That's a very popular one. Or you can do dates and times selected below. Let's do an example of that one. You could choose, let's say, uh, 30 minutes, 24-hour clock, say 3 a.m. Uh, select days of the week. Just hold down the control button on your keyboard and pick whatever days of the month you want this done. So by looking at this, this would say 3 a.m. on the 3rd, the 7th, the 16th, the 20th, the 27th, and 29th of a month. Pretty much every month if you choose all. Now you could choose select months, you could choose select weekdays. It, it gets really granular and this is really a nice feature as far as setting uh, scheduled cron jobs. Well, let's just create it. Takes you back to the list. Let's go back into our cron job and let's run it real quick. Okay, that was pretty quick. Now, that ran very fast. I only have like two accounts set up on this virtualization, just a few emails, few calendar appointments. Now, the larger your server, the more users you have, the more file attachments on emails, the little longer it's going to take. Now, I like to stop the services just to make sure the services are stopped when the SQL dump and the files are moved just to make sure nothing gets broken. I'm sure there's many ways of doing this and, um, and I'm sure they all work. This is just one way I like to do it. So now let's check to see if the uh, backup worked. We're going to go into storage and then Zarafa and there it is. Today is the third. Um, so 9-3-2012 and there is the SQL and then there is the file. So everything worked accordingly to what I, as I hoped it would work, and it looks good. And uh, let's we can now proceed on to the next part. Now that information that's in that script, the backup script, is actually located on my website here, thejonas.net. You can find it under software, Zential, Zarafa. And there the information is, you can just copy and paste that into an empty file and save it with a .sh extension and on permissions give it the ability to execute. 
This is also going to be covered. This is the MySQL. This is going to restore the database to the uh, server. We'll get to that in a few minutes here. So when you do copy that information uh, for that script, we'll just do a quick recap here. You're just going to paste it into the file, right click on the file, and set permissions to execute, and that way it'll be able to run. Okay, now that we've run the backups, and you know where to get the information for the um, script, let's start the restoration process of um, this email server. So let's go into the webmail and let's delete some of those emails. And right here, well, again, it's Donald. I have a couple of emails in here and we'll just delete them. And delete that one too. And go into calendar. Um, I believe there are some calendar appointments here. Let's just go back a little bit. There they go. Let's delete those two. And we'll hopefully restore when we do the restore. And let's log out. And I have another user called test. And let's log in as this user. And delete the emails. I was doing emails back and forth between these two users just for some examples. And we'll delete both of these. And I think I have a, there are a few calendar entries here. I have to go back probably for them. There they go. And everything's been deleted. And we're going to need to restore this information. Now this process is uh, relatively simple. First, let's uh, restore the SQL file. I'm going to uncompress it. And there it is. Just gonna double click on it. I'm gonna put it into the home folder of root, makes it easy to find that way. And there it is, it's extracted. And we're gonna rename this to make it the same as the command we're gonna run. The dot SQL extension. Alright. Uh we're gonna go back up. Now the uh Zarafa file, we're going to have to replace that under var lib, and that is right here. Now, let me put this in more of a uh, view as icons. Scroll down. Now, before I start removing folders here, I need to stop these services. So it's etc.init.d and it's going to be post fix stop and we're also going to stop the uh, Zarafa service C-A-R-A-F-A dash server now with these being stopped we can proceed to moving around folders now let's check the permissions on here first so we can match them up all right I don't like to delete anything right off the bat. I think it's best practice to just maybe rename it. You can always go back and delete it. This way you don't commit yourself to losing your information uh, just in case it doesn't work. All right, and now we're gonna copy over this file. And we're gonna have to rename it. Now it is renamed. And let's double check those permissions again and make sure they're the same. Looks good. Now we just need to restore the SQL portion of it, which we've already extracted. And if I run an ls command, you'll see it in there right here. You can see it. Uh, I'm going to need that command, so I will reach out to my website here. And under the Jonas Net. Um, need well there's no flash player installed on the server it's not really necessary for a server environment okay there is that command I mentioned earlier I mean I guess I can just close out of this 
and let's paste this in. Ah, looks like I didn't quite copy it. And we'll just go back in there real quick and I'll grab that information. Okay, now I got it copied. And let's paste. I noticed that sometimes when you close the browser out and you copied something, it kind of loses that, uh, like that cache. So you almost have to leave the browser open when you copy it before you actually paste it so you don't lose that information. Um, I'm just going to go over here and we're going to change. For some reason that changes the characters when you paste it in a terminal. Change them back. I need to put in my password, which is, it's pretty secret, don't tell nobody. Password one and a username, which is test. So it's going to go to MySQL. It's going to use this credential and it's going to look for the Zopra database and it will use this file to replace it. So, really, all I have to do now is just hit enter. Done. Now I'm going to have to restart up these services, get them going again. So, uh, let's go back and post fix start and Zopra start and we will exit out of that and if everything worked correctly when I go back into the web mail my email should be back on both accounts along with calendars and there are both emails and let's go back here. Uh, here are the calendar entries. Excellent. Let's go into test. And both emails are back. And calendar, go back to the previous date when these entries are made. And there they are. So the whole backup process worked as expected. Uh, worked out very well. Excellent. Uh, one thing I would like to add before I end the tutorial, that is whenever I build a new server, I always like to make an image of it. Uh, two of my favorite imaging tools are Clonezilla and the Fog. It really comes down to personal preference. They're both excellent uh, imaging tools. Um, I also like to make images of when the builds change. So say for instance when Zential uh, 2.0 came out and I built it initially, I made an image of it. and then when I was upgraded to uh, Zential 2.1, I made an image of that. And of course, when Zential 2.2 came out, I made an image of that. By having these multiple images, it makes it easier for when I have to restore data. It's I find it easier to restore the data to um, the version of the server it was taken from. And so by having the base images, it makes, uh, I find, restoring easier. Um, so I would just like to... Thank you for visiting the Jonas.net and thank everybody for the nice comments on my website. It's always nice to get positive feedback. And thank you for watching my tutorial and have a nice day.